There's been many times that I've wondered how restricted the flow through a dryer would be if it was reversed. Now I live in heat pump territory where there's bi-flow dryers, so most of the time it's not even an issue. I don't have to think about it when I'm on the job. But guys up north and other parts of the country where there aren't as many heat pumps, you get one-way dryers to go with your air conditioning systems. So I'm going to test today how restricted a dryer going the opposite direction will make a flow of nitrogen. Nitrogen is going to be our gas of choice here. We're going to compare our flow before and after we switch the dryer and make an assessment on how restrictive they really are, if at all. So I have my nitrogen tank. We open it up just slightly to create a small to moderate flow of nitrogen. And what I'm doing is I'm using this Yellow Jacket VCRT to shut the flow on and off to make it one fell swoop, 100% down to 0%. Now it's off right now. I'm gonna give you an example of what the flow is gonna be like. So small to moderate flow. For the nitrogen bottle, it's gonna flow through the hose into the dryer. Right now it's pointed in the correct direction. It's then gonna flow out of the dryer into this blue hose. It's gonna flow into the same apparatus that I built for testing micron gauges and vacuum pumps. I wanted a nice big volume to fill up to slow down the rise of our needle here to make sure we got a good representation on how much restriction took place when the dryer was reversed. And of course, we'll be watching the gauge closely as we open up the flow of nitrogen. It looks like it took just under 20 seconds or right at 20 seconds to get to 200 PSI. Now we're gonna let the pressure off of this and then switch it over. Now we're flipping it over. As you can see, the arrow is gonna be pointing the opposite direction. Now let's open her up. As you see, it took a little bit longer, about two seconds longer to get the flow through that dryer once it was reversed. I'm not a guy who's satisfied with, hey, two seconds and we flip it around and whatever. We're gonna do it one more time just to make sure that the results are the same. We're gonna leave it in reverse position and go ahead and do that test one more time after letting the air off of this. I'm gonna open up our valve again. As we can see, we have 22 seconds, 22.85, almost 23 seconds with a reverse flow. Let's try one more time with the correct flow. I have the dryer situated in the proper orientation coming from the bottle over here to the dryer, to the apparatus, to the gauge. We're gonna open things back up now as I hit my stopwatch simultaneously, or really, really close, should I say. It's really exciting stuff. We're coming up to the wire here. And that's why you do more than one test right there because it took just as long or slightly longer than it did to reverse flow. Go figure. Let's go ahead and give that one more try. All right, here we go again. Man, only takes 20 seconds. By the time I get over there, it's just about done. So right now we're at 2552, meaning the problem is I think we're having is that our pressure in the bottle is decreasing and therefore the flow is decreasing. Since we didn't have any conclusive evidence that flipping the dryer around backwards caused a slower flow in vapor form, I decided to just cut the dryer open. So I got the Roby grinder and I cut it open. And as you can see, we are facing so Going to the right is our flow. And we look around inside of this dryer, we can see most of it is just this desiccant in the middle, takes up almost all of the dryer. On the end, there's a little bracket, but the bracket doesn't extend all the way around. It's just a little bracket that goes straight across. It's thin, like this big right here, going straight across. So it's not gonna impede too incredibly the flow of refrigerant, because remember, it's flowing this way. So we have refrigerant coming in here, going through the desiccant, then exiting on the other side, looks like it is a little, almost like a paper style filter, and then a mesh filter on the other side. 
So the refrigerator is going to flow through this paper filter and through the mesh and then exit. So I think all that's going to happen if we reverse flow is not necessarily a restrictive aspect of it, at least not initially, but when it flows in, it's going to hit this mesh. Instead of gathering particles into the desiccant, it's going to gather them on the other side of the mesh in this little paper style filter. So the filtration is not going to work like it should, but potentially, at least initially, it may not inhibit the flow of refrigerant. As time goes by, the fact that it's going through these filters first may cause an issue because it's not passing through that desiccant and then through these filters. These are becoming the initial filters, which they're not really designed to be, evidently, based on how this is set up. So what do you guys think? Do you think that we could reverse this thing and run it for the lifetime of a unit? Me just guessing, I guess we could do it for quite a while. You let me know. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Please consider joining Subscribestar to help support the channel and help pay for the videos. There's a link in the description. We're going to be doing a potential Home Depot or some kind of gift card at the end of the month based on how many people have joined. And of course, just liking and commenting is really the best thing you can do as well. My name is Zach Ciotta. I'm the host of the HVAC Shop Talk podcast, and I'll see you guys on the next video.